In this video, I'll be testing a Merilabs XVN50. It's advertised as a versatile engineering resin. So in this series of tests, I'll be looking at things like dimensional accuracy and sharpness, impact resistance, how well it responds to crush forces, whether it holds its shape but remains flexible, and how it handles straight lines, and how well you can tap a thread into it. Yeah, I was uh, fully committed for that test, so stick around for that one. Look, these are just a few simple tests, but there's a bit to get through, so you can uh, skip ahead using the chapter markers in the video description. And I need to say that Amerilabs did send me this resin to test, but the tests are all my own, and they had no say in how I conducted them. So right up front, I'd like to say thanks to Amerilabs for this opportunity. Now let's see how this goes. I've used this part for testing all the tough or engineering type resins that I've used. It helps to keep things uh, consistent, at least in one use case. And when looking for impact resistance, this is where I drop this hammer, this one right here, uh, onto the part with its own weight, a bit like that, um, at least 10 times. Now the part has a wall thickness of three millimeters, keep that in mind. In this particular test, I repeated the drop 15 times because it was resisting the impacts really well. You can see here from these impacts that the resin doesn't crack or chip and only suffers some minor scuff marks. And one of the key properties needed for this particular part is enough stiffness to hold its shape in use, but also to have enough flex to withstand a sudden shock like you might expect in normal workshop usage. And I'd say that the performance here is excellent. Now it will break of course if you hit it hard enough, but then this resin isn't claiming to be indestructible and this part wasn't designed to be indestructible either. Now to the vice test to see how the part goes in compression. I am expecting this to break of course, but it's how it breaks that's of interest. Some resins will just flex all the way until the vice jaws close completely, but you can see here that this resin does actually break suddenly, and I'd say that's it's most likely because uh, it's not so much a tough resin, but a stiffer resin which still has some good flexibility. And that can be useful, especially when the part is subjected to warmer temperatures in use. It's still strong, but it holds its shape. In this next test, the mix between stiffness and flexibility is also really important. This part is where the vacuum hose connects to this vacuum head. It needs to be dimensionally accurate and hold its shape but it also needs to be flexible for these two tabs that hold it in place. And you can see here that there is enough flex for it to be easily installed whilst still maintaining its shape. Now I've tried this part with other resins and it's this point here which usually is the weak point and that's usually where the resin will crack. Now for this particular one, the, uh, the finish is a little bit streaky. So I think I need to do a little bit more work on positioning it on the build plate to uh, deal with that problem. So a bit more homework to be done there. Another claimed feature of this resin is that it's good for printing straight lines. This dovetail needs to have a straight flat base and sharp details on the corners. Now, in a previous video, I compared this to a tough resin from uh, another brand, uh, and you could definitely notice the difference. Not only is the long straight edge, well, straighter, <laughs> the base of the print is much flatter with less deformation around the holes. Now when looking for detail in a resin, you often see other reviewers showing highly detailed models, you know, for things like tabletop gaming, and you might need that. But if the detail that you're looking for is a sharp corner or a straight line, uh, then you can see that this resin can print them quite well, and in some cases much better than others. Dimensional accuracy is also very good here. The dovetail is designed to be exactly 15 millimeters wide, and that's exactly how it measures using these vernier calipers. And when it comes to straight lines, I also modeled up this lampshade design, which is uh, kind of a straight line torture test because it's almost completely made of straight lines. Lampshade designs are a great way to test all kinds of resin properties and designs. And, uh, and by the way, if you're a teacher, you might like to keep that in mind for future design projects to run with your students. I used auto supports to support the model and well, you can see that there's a lot going on here but I figured that I'd need more supports than less to give this a decent chance to work. But the result is, well, again, it's really good. The lines are all straight and the overall shape is square. It's not twisted or warped. Uh, look, okay, it's not 100% square, but that's because there's also some flex in the resin and you'd expect that on these thin lines. In fact, it's flexible and then returns to its original shape really well. You can see here that it will take a lot of bending and flexing even with these relatively delicate sections and corners. One drawback with this particular design is that it needed lots of sanding to remove the marks left behind from removing all of those supports. And that's left the resin a bit gray in places. And look, it's okay, you can buff that out, but it's extra work, so keep that in mind. But as for the light feature itself, yeah, I really like it. Now let's take a look at thread tapping. I designed this eye nut, this one right here, just have a look at how nicely that's printed by the way. 
That's a beautiful shape and beautiful texture. Anyway, I designed this with a blind hole to take an M10 thread. I had no trouble tapping the thread, which is, well, no surprise really. There's no resistance being provided by the resin, but I also didn't feel like it was uh, in any risk of being cross-threaded. The tap just carved out the resin really nicely. But what about the weight? As in, how much weight can this handle? What sort of stresses can I put on this thing? Well, to test it, I set up a simple rig using a rope, an M10 eye bolt, this one right here that I could thread into the eye nut, uh, and then a carabiner. I first tried the five kilogram weight using a container filled with five liters of water, and uh, I totally expected the thread to be able to handle that. And sure, of course it was no problem at all. But um, what about my own weight? Now I don't have lab equipment to do a scientific test, but I weigh about uh, 85 kilograms. So I fully committed and decided to test if it could hold my weight. Now, this isn't a dynamic load, and I wasn't on it for very long, but the thread was able to handle both the seated weight, which is less than 85 kilos, and also the full 85 kilograms when I was fully suspended. Now, I wasn't worried about the ring snapping or breaking, but I did wonder whether the thread would just shear off and uh, send me plummeting to the concrete floor, which was padded, by the way. There was also no sign of damage or deformation to the ring after it held my weight. Now sure, it will have its limits, but I couldn't find anything heavier to safely test this with. And in the absence of a proper lab test, well, I'd say that this result is very encouraging. So what do we make of all of this? Is this resin versatile? Well, I could spend all day here testing all kinds of applications, but you can see from the range of use cases in these tests that yes, the resin is versatile. And in these tests, it does live up to its claims. Well, at least some of the claims that I could test. If you've got projects that need similar resin properties to what I've shown here, then this is certainly worth your consideration. Now, a couple of things that might put you off. The color is, uh, well, it's black, and it only comes in black. And that's okay if you like black. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then there's the price. It's at the more expensive end of resins, but as you can see from these tests, it is a very capable resin, and, well, you get what you pay for. There's a link in the description if you'd like to find out more about XVN50 and where to get it. And again, I'd really like to thank Amerilabs for the chance to test this resin. There's a lot that goes into doing these tests and modeling up the parts, which I then print and destroy. <laughs> and I don't get paid to do these tests or reviews. So uh, I really appreciate you watching and uh, thanks so much if you've stuck around until the end. Now, if you've got value out of this, then please like, comment, and consider subscribing. And we'll see you next time.